Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the submandibular gland and the anatomy of the sublingual glands. They are paired salivary glands. The submandibular gland is larger than that of the sublingual gland, but submandibular gland is smaller than that of the parotid gland. First of all, we will discuss about the submandibular gland. The submandibular gland are located in the digestive triangle mostly. Okay. The submandibular glands. are located in the digestive triangle okay only the deep part of the submandibular gland is located in the floor of the mouth so most of the part of the submandibular gland is the superficial part and the deep part. The superficial part is mostly in the digestive triangle. The deep part of the submandibular gland is in the floor of the mouth. Okay. So it looks like a walnut. It looks like an walnut walnut shape appearance j shape almost like a walnut okay so this submandibular gland has two part two parts one is the superficial part there is a the larger part superficial Okay, another part is the deep part. Superficial and deep. Superficial part is in the digestive triangle. Deep part is in the floor of the mouth behind the sublingual gland. If you go there, the submandibular gland, it is related to the submandibular fossa of the mandible. And it is below the mylohyoid line. So, this is the submandibular fossa of the mandible. This is the mylohyoid line. So, below the mylohyoid line and the submandibular fossa, we have the submandibular gland. Okay. So, it is located. It is located below the mylohyoid line at the submandibular fossa of the mandible okay of the mandible okay and its relationship to that of the mylo is very important to us so so if you draw the mylohyoid muscle here like that mylohyoid muscle most part of this gland is below the below the mylohyoid muscle superficial part the part is over or on the superior surface of the mylohyoid muscle this is the mylohyoid this is the superficial part superficial part of the submandibular gland 
this is the deep part deep part of the submandibular gland mandibular gland okay of the submandibular gland submandibular gland okay we got that the relationship and the part of the of the submandibular gland so this entire part is the submandibular gland this is the deep part this is superficial part so superficial part is below the mylohyoid line below the mylohyoid muscle the deep part is above the mylohyoid muscle we got that now we have some relationship that of the mylohyoid especially the superficial part will give emphasis on that okay so the superficial part of the submandibular gland is partially enclosed by two layers of the deep cervical fascia okay the superficial part part that is below the mylohyoid muscle part of the submandibular gland is enclosed by two layers of the deep cervical fascia deep cervical fascia if you look at this picture this is the superficial part of the submandibular gland the submandibular gland mandibular gland superficial part and this is the greater cornu of the hyoid bone greater cornu of the hyoid bone and the superficial lamina will attach to the lower border of the body of the mandible deep lamina will attach to the mylohyoid line this is the deep lamina deep lamina of the cervical fascia is superficial lamina of the cervical fascia superficial superficial lamina lamina of deep cervical fascia of of deep cervical fascia of deep cervical fascia Okay, so this is a superficial part of the submandibular salivary gland is enclosed by the deep cervical fascia. This is the deep lamina. This is a superficial lamina. This is the lower border of the mandible. This is the mylohyoid line of the mandible. What is this? Okay, this is the mandibular canal. Mandibular. Mandibular canal. What are the contents of the mandibular canal? The mandibular canal contains the inferior alveolar nerve, inferior alveolar artery, inferior alveolar vein. So we get nerve, artery, vein here in the mandibular canal. Okay, so we got that. And you have to know that the submandibular gland. If we go to the inferior surface of the submandibular gland, inferior, inferior relationship, relationship will get skin, then we'll get the platysma, then we'll get the cervical 
branch of the facial nerve. Okay, we got that cervical branch of the facial nerve, and we'll get facial vein and submandibular lymph node. We'll get facial vein. We'll get submandibular mandibular lymph node. Okay, we got the structure in relationship to the inferior surface of the submandibular gland. We have skin, latissima, cervical branch of facial nerve, deep fascia, facial vein. Okay, facial nerve. We have also here we can add deep fascia deep fascia okay facial vein submandibular lymph node okay we got the structures on the under surface of the submandibular gland we got that now we go to the submandibular duct okay our gland is like that this is our gland this is superficial part this is deep part this is mostly related to the submandibular fossa of the mandible. Okay, we have formation of the duct, the submandibular duct. Submandibular, mandibular duct. Also called Wharton's duct. Okay, so the duct is formed from the superficial part of the submandibular gland by multiple tributaries okay that is formed that that goes there it is the formation of duct here posterior part of the part of the superficial part of the submandibular gland then it goes here and it emerges from the deep part of the submandibular gland deep part of the submandibular gland so this is the submandibular duct here Okay, we got the duct here, duct formation here, submandibular duct. Okay, we got the submandibular duct, and the submandibular duct is passing just on the on the medial part of the sublingual gland. It passes along the medial part of the submandibular gland. Okay, so this submandibular duct passes medial to the sublingual gland. Gland. Okay, and it opens in the floor of the mouth. This opens. Into the floor of the mouth, floor of the mouth, where on, on the side of the lower part of the frenulum of the tongue, okay, near the lower part of the Frenulum, frenulum of the tongue. What is frenulum of the tongue? Frenulum of the tongue is a connective tissue that anchors the tongue to the floor of the mouth. We got that submandibular duct, and submandibular duct is is located between the Lingual nerve and hypoglossal nerve. Okay. Submandibular duct. Is located. Between the. Lingual nerve. That is above. And hypoglossal nerve along with the hypoglossal vein, hypoglossal nerve, okay, between them, but 
as it goes anteriorly, it is crossed by the lingual noun. It is crossed by the lingual noun. Lingual noun. from lateral to medial to medial because lingual nerve will supply the tongue okay so if this is the lingual if this is a sub mandibular gland duct lingual nerve is above lingual nerve and it turn around it and it will go to the tongue this is the duct and this is the nerve Nerve is above, then it goes laterally and it turns around the duct to supply the tongue. Nerve is the, this is the lingual nerve, lingual nerve and duct is the submandibular duct. Okay, we got the submandibular duct. Okay, we got this is the submandibular duct here submandibular duct here at the floor of the mouth submandibular mandibular duct one here another one is here okay they open at the summit of the of the sublingual papilla okay on each side of the Phenomenon of the tongue, okay, opens on the crest. You can call they open at the caruncle, caruncle of the on the caruncle of the sublingual lingual fourth okay on each side of the pheromone of the tongue okay so we got that opening here the submandibular submandibular duct okay so we got let us summarize again submandibular gland it has two part deep part superficial part deep part is actually superior to the mylohyoid muscle the superficial part is the maximum part that is in the digestive triangle okay the submandibular duct opens at the floor of the mouth at near the lower part of the frenulum of the tongue on the sublingual caruncle okay we got that okay we got the submandibular gland submandibular gland is what type of gland this is a mixed gland okay mixed gland that means it is both mucus and serous so you can call it serous mucus okay serous mucus gland but serous part is more prominent okay you can call predominantly dominantly serous so it has two type of assigning the mucus assigning serous assigning histologically but mostly this is zero this this is zero mucus gland mostly serous assigning but we may have mixture of the serous and mucus assigning we call it we call it zero mucus demi lune there is also possible histologically we may get those the mixture of the serous assigning and the and the mucus assigning that makes a half moon shade appearance we call it demi lune okay we got the submandibular gland now what is the blood supply blood supply we have to know that what what artery is 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 close to that that is the facial artery so blood supply by facial artery and 
the venous drainage by facial vein and common facial vein common facial vein okay we got that blood supply venous arterial supply venous drainage lymphatic drainage is very important to us lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage okay lymphatic drainage by the submandibular lymph nodes bullar lymph node okay submandibular lymph node will eventually drain into the deep cervical lymph node that is the jugular omohyoid lymph node jugular omohyoid lymph nodes jugular omohyoid lymph nodes that is deep cervical lymph node the this is one of the deep cervical lymph node okay we got the the lymphatic drainage now we we'll go to the nerve supply it is very important to us submandibular gland nerve supply nerve supply this is an exocrine gland so it should have autonomic nerve supply so we have the sympathetic we have parasympathetic we have the sensory like all other salivary gland sensory innervation so we have three type of innervation sympathetic that is vasomotor and it will decrease secretion decrease secretion from the gland parasympathetic that is secretomotor secretomotor and it will increase secretion from the submandibular gland it will increase secretion sensory sensory is carried out by the by the sensory nerve for pain touch temperature okay temperature we got that sympathetic what is the source of sympathetic innervation sympathetic like other salivary gland we have the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion superior cervical sympathetic pathetic ganglion okay so you get post immunic fiber that will follow the blood vessels like that of the external carotid artery internal carotid artery here external carotid artery and the facial artery okay so we we'll get post immunic fiber we we'll get plexus around the facial artery plexus around the facial artery okay and it will distribute it to the submandibular gland by anywhere maybe through the through the lingual nerve okay it will go there then we we'll go to the lingual nerve and it will go to the submandibular gland sympathetic decrease secretion vasomotor from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion we have the post ganglionic fiber we start post ganglionic fibers that will follow the blood vessels and other nerves it will go to the plexus around the facial artery then it will go to the lingual nerve it will go to lingual nerve to supply the tongue as well as the 
as well as the submandibular black mold. We got the sympathetic innervation. Okay. Now we'll go to the parasympathetic innervation. Parasympathetic. That is secretor motor increase secretion. It is secretor motor. Okay. What is the source of that? It will come from the superior salivatory nucleus. Superior salivatory salivatory nucleus. Where it is located, superior salivatory nucleus, in the pons, which part of the pons, lower part of the pons. Okay. Then from there, it will follow the facial nerve. It will follow the. It will go through the chordae tympani branch, chordae tympani branch of facial nerve in the in the temporal in the petrous part of temporal bone, chordae tympani. Branch okay of the facial nerve, then it will go to the lingual nerve. Lingual nerve, this fiber will go through the lingual nerve to the ganglion, submandibular ganglion. That is suspended from the lingual nerve, ganglion. From there, ganglion will get post ganglionic fiber. Okay, post ganglionic fiber, ganglionic fiber that will go both the submandibular gland and sublingual gland from the submandibular ganglion. Okay, it will get it will, it will go post ganglionic fibers will go to both the submandibular ganglion. And sublingual ganglion to the submandibular salivary gland and the sublingual salivary gland. Okay, from the submandibular ganglion. From submandibular ganglion, we get the postganglionic parasympathetic fiber to the submandibular salivary gland and to the sublingual salivary gland. Okay, we got the parasympathetic. We got the Parasympathetic, then we go to the sensory. Sensory is very simple. Sensory nerve is carried by the lingual nerve. Lingual nerve. Lingual nerve is a branch of the mandibular nerve. We got that. The nerve supply. Okay. We'll learn some of the clinical anatomy from submandibular gland. Clinical anatomy. The submandibular duct may have stone formation. Okay, maybe one or two stone. Okay, stone in the submandibular duct. Mandibular duct. Okay, submandibular duct. We call it. Sialolithiasis. Sialolithiasis. Okay. It can be diagnosed very easily by sialography. Diagnosed by sialography. Okay. Ideally, when the surgeon gives incision, that incision should be around one inch below the angle of the mandible to idea to protect the cervical branch of the facial nerve. Okay, so that is the idea. So we have to learn what is silography, silolithiasis. Okay, stone may also present in the other cerebral gland like the parotid gland duct. Then we will also do silography. So Stone in the salivary gland duct is called sialolithiasis. Okay. Then we'll go to the sublingual gland. Okay. 
sublingual gland is a mixed gland but it is predominantly mucus. But it is predominantly mucus gland. Okay, we got that. What is the sublingual gland? Sublingual gland is present in the floor of the mouth over the mylohyoid line. Please remember, superficial part of the submandibular gland is below the mylohyoid line posteriorly. But the sublingual gland is located in the floor of the mouth in front of the deep part of the submandibular gland and it is above the mylohyoid line. Okay. Above the mylohyoid line of the mandible line of the mandible. Okay in the sublingual fossa of the mandible fossa of the mandible we got that and it is anterior to the to the deep part of the of the Submandibular gland. We got that. It is covered by a mucosal fold to produce sublingual fold. Okay. It is covered by mucous fold. Covered by mucus. Mucus fold called sublingual fold okay and that sublingual fold is just lateral to the submandibular salivary gland duct okay we got that so it is in the floor of the mouth above the mylohyoid line in the sublingual fossa it is located anteriorly, submandibular gland is located posteriorly. Okay. So, what is the blood supply of the sublingual gland? Blood supply? Very easy. Lingual artery. Branch of what? Lingual artery is a branch of the external carotid artery. Facial artery is a branch of what artery? External carotid artery. And also from the facial artery. Facial artery by means of the submental branches. This is the blood supply. Venous drainage, according to the just like the arteries, we have the lingual vein, facial vein that will drain the sublingual gland. How about the lymphatic drainage? Lymphatic drainage by means of the submental lymph nodes. Okay, that will ultimately go to submandibular lymph nodes. That will go to the deep cervical lymph nodes. What are those? These are the jugular omohyoid. Omohyoid, jugular omohyoid lymph nodes. Okay. So we can make it make it easy. Jugular omohyoid lymph nodes. Okay, we got that. The lymphatic dentist. 
is a gland, so it should have duct. How many ducts? It is multiple ducts, not one duct. Maybe 4 to 20 ducts. 4 to 20 ducts. Okay. Where does it open? Where do they open? They open in the floor of the mouth, on the sublingual, on the crest of the sublingual fold. Okay open into the crest of the sublingual fold okay but some of them may open into the submandibular gland duct okay a few may open into the Submandibular duct, submandibular gland duct. Okay, we got the the duct. We got the blood supply. We got the lymphatic drainage. How are the nerve supply? Nerve supply is that of the submandibular gland. Sympathetic, parasympathetic. Sympathetic is coming from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. Okay, then posteriorly fiber will follow the blood vessels through the forms plexus around the external carotid artery, internal carotid artery, here around the facial artery, then it will be distributed to the gland directly or may go through the lingual nerve. Parasympathetic, again like that of the submandibular salivary gland, it should come from the superior salivary nucleus, from where? From the pons of the brain stem. Then it follows the facial nerve, okay. Then in the pitous part of temporal bone, the parasympathetic fiber would carried by the caudate tympanic nerve. That will unite with that of the lingual nerve in an acute angle. They will unite. Then through the lingual nerve, this, this parasympathetic fiber will go to the submandibular ganglion. From there, we'll get the post fiber that will be distributed to the submandibular cerebral gland and sublingual cerebral gland. Okay. We got the nerve supply, we got the duct, and this is a seromucous gland, but mostly it is mucus. Okay. We got that. So, this is the, this is the sublingual folds here. This is the sublingual fold. So, lingual folds. So, we got that sublingual fold on the crest of sublingual fold, the sublingual gland darts open. Okay, we got that. Now, we get some clinical anatomy. Okay, clinical anatomy will give emphasis on renewal. What is renewal? Renula is the retention cyst of the sub of the sublingual gland. Okay. This is the retention retention cyst of the of the sublingual lingual gland. So it is usually unilateral and it is in the floor of the mouth it looks bluish color and sometimes it may go down sometimes our myelohyoid muscle may have some gap it may be in the on the on the it may go through that dehiscence or gap between the myelohyoid muscle so it is its name is renula because it looks like the throat of a croaking frog that's why it is called renula. So, it is making importance is that yes, it may cause some type of problem in the mouth because it occupies space. Okay, so it should be taken out surgically by the surgeon, the renula. Okay, so that's all about the submandibular gland and sublingual gland. If you like my video, please support my channel, please subscribe me. And please share the information with your friends. Have a nice day. 
Bye now.